Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be evaluating a function. f of x as, uh, is given as f of x plus square root of x equals x minus square root of x. And we're going to evaluate f of 12. So we're going to do this in two ways. Let's start with the first method. Now for our first method, we're going to try to find the general expression for f of x. So I'm going to go ahead and use a different variable here. Obviously, I can't set it equal to x. So let's go ahead and use y here. So let's set x plus square root of x equal to y. And then we're going to try to find out what um, how x can be expressed in terms of y. All right, great. So our assumption basically means that x plus square root of x is equal to y. Awesome. Now, from here we get the following for square root of x, which is important because we want this to be well defined. So square root of x can be written as y over x from here. Since the square root of x, for obviously, if x is equal to 0, you're going to get f of 0 equals 0, right? That's a different story, but suppose at the moment uh, x does not equal 0 because that would just imply that y equals 0 automatically. So if x does not equal 0, square root of x is defined only for positive values, right? So square root of x is going to be greater than 0. So therefore, uh, y minus x needs to be greater than 0. And this implies that y is greater than x. And since um, y is greater than x and x needs to be positive, obviously, in order for this to be defined, that also implies, you know, this inequality or system implies that y is greater than 0 as well. OK, great. So we have the following system. Under those conditions, let's go ahead and solve this equation for x. So this equation gives us the following. If we kind of square both sides here, right? If you square both sides here, we're going to get the following. x from here, x equals y squared minus 2yx plus x squared. And then if you write this as a quadratic equation in x, it's going to look like the following. We're going to put everything on the same side. And it's going to be like x squared minus, I have 2y, and then I'm going to have a negative x here. So it's going to be the quantity 2y plus 1 multiplied by x plus y squared is equal to 0. So in order to solve for x, I'm going to solve this as a quadratic equation, which is going to give us, obviously, two solutions. And I'm going to be checking both of these solutions. OK, let's go ahead and do that by using the quadratic formula x can be written as negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 2y minus plus, uh, 2y plus 1 quantity squared, minus 4ac, which is 4y squared, and if you, and divided by 2a, which is 2. If you go ahead and subtract 4y squared from this expression inside the parentheses, 4y squared cancels out, and you end up with the following. You get 2y plus 1 plus minus the square root of 4y plus 1. And the whole thing is divided by 2. OK, great. So this formula, the quadratic formula, gave us two solutions. But which solution are we going to get? Because this function is supposed to have a single unique inverse if it does. Uh, and we have some conditions to check against that. OK. So first of all, we know that x is less than y, right? We already talked about that. Uh, because y is greater than x, obviously x is less than y. So let's go ahead and um, set this up as two inequalities. But let's go ahead and uh, look at the two different solutions. First of all, one of the solutions is going to be basically 2y plus 1 plus square root of 4y plus 1 divided by 2. And if I use the requirement x is less than y, this implies that 2y plus 1 plus the square root of 4y plus 1 divided by 2 is less than y. Obviously, we can multiply both sides of this inequality by 2 because 2 is positive, so it's, it's going to be OK. And that gives us a nicer inequality, obviously, because 2y is going to cancel out. So let's go ahead and uh, cancel out 2y. Uh, I should probably use the b so I can talk about 2b. But anyways, from here we get the following. 1 plus square root of 4y plus 1 is less than 0, or the square root of 4y plus 1 is less than negative 1. And then I'm like, what? Are you sure about that? Well, the square root of a real number cannot be 
less than negative 1 cannot even be less than 0, right? So this is impossible, therefore, we're not really getting any good solutions from here. So we're going to proceed with the other solution. This solution did not work, unfortunately. Great, that's not a problem. We wanted to get a unique solution anyways. So this means that x could be, or must be, or should be, whatever you want to call that, x equals this. And we want this to be less than y, obviously, for obvious reasons. And then let's go ahead and solve this inequality and let's see what we get from here. So we're going to get the following. Okay, 2y cancels out again, but this time we get a nicer inequality, right? We don't get something nonsensical. We get square root of 4y plus minus 5. Put it on the right hand side. That is going to be greater than 1. And since everything is positive here, or at least non uh, negative, we can square both sides, and this is going to give us 4y plus 1 is greater than 1. Subtracting 1 from both sides is going to give us 4y plus 4y is greater than 0, and that implies y is greater than 0. And is that a good thing to have? Let's go back to our conditions, and we said that, well, y needs to be greater than 0. Awesome. So we got a good solution. Yay, that works. That means that x can be expressed as the following. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and use that uh, as our equation or solution, I should say. So x is basically, for this problem, x can be written as 2y plus 1 minus the square root of 4y plus 1 divided by 2. Okay, now in other words, if it, since x can be expressed like that, and my original equation was f of x plus square root of x equals x minus the square root of x. So here, if I replace x with this here and here, that should give me f of y. Why? Because that was our starting point. Remember, we started with the assumption that, hey, I want x plus square root of x to equal y. Therefore, this is uh, the x value that I got from me. If I replace x with that, I should be getting y inside the parentheses. But what about, uh, what am I getting on the right-hand side, right? So this is equal to y, we know that. I mean, you can check that, and I'll actually show you a graph that verifies this. But anyways, trust me for now on this. f of y can be written as now. I'm going to replace x with this guy over here. That's I know that's going to look gigantic, but it's kind of fun to do. And then I'm going to obviously square root that whole expression, which is kind of gigantic, but that's okay. Of course, you could call that something, and just do it that way, but anyways. Remember, our goal was to find f of 12, and if you replace f uh, with uh, y with 12 on both sides, uh, you're gonna get uh, two times 12 plus one, which is 25, minus four times 12, 48 plus one is 49, square root of 49 is equal to seven, and then you're just gonna get 18 over two from here, which is nine, and the second expression is just gonna be square root of nine. So it's kinda like nine minus square root of nine, so f of 12 from here, is going to become 9 minus 3, which is equal to 6. Let's go ahead and talk about the second method now, and then I'll show you the graph of this. Okay, second method is obviously, definitely, for sure, is shorter, and it's much better, but no pain, no gain. Okay, in this case, we know that x must be positive, and we do want to find f of 12, so why not set it equal to 12? From here, we get the following equation, x plus square root of x is equal to 12, and if you replace square root of x with u, you get u squared plus u minus 12 is equal to 0. And as you know from here, we're going to get u equals negative 4 and u equals 3. Obviously, uh, square root of x is equal to u, and that needs to be positive. So we're going to reject negative 4, and we're going to go with u equals 3, and that implies square root of x is equal to 3, and that means x equals 9. So if I replace x with 9 on both sides, then I'm going to be getting f of 12, and that's going to give me 6 as well. So we get the same answer, obviously much shorter. The first method is super duper painful, but at least it gives you an application of the quadratic formula to equations with two variables. Now is the time to take a look at the graph of something, and here we go. If you look at the graph of x equals that gigantic expression that I just used to replace x with for, y equal, for, for positive y values, what do you get? You get y equals x or x equals y because that's what happens. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. 
I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.